had a better countdown. No, wait! I do! Right, boys and girls, it's the Eastern edition. Easter edition. Did I say Eastern? Eastern? Easter edition. Eastern dream. Happy Easter, everybody. The Eastern Brothers dream. Hack the Matrix. I am here with the Highlander. There can be only one. What is going on, man? Whoa. Nothing. Nothing. Try it again. Do, up, do the rock right? and roll. Do, do rock and roll. Whoa. Nothing. Nothing. I don't get See, it, man. I, I guess it's only good once every once in a while. I'm going to keep trying it, though. Yeah, keep trying it. Occasionally just hit it. Yeah. Let's see who's in the chat. Uh, Ariel is going off in the chat for some reason. She's like, where's my show? Where's my show? Where's my show? Ariel's going to be heard. That's all I can Where, say. Where's rugby and cricket and soccer? What is this, Joe? I thought this was sports. Where's the women's mud wrestling at? <laughs> mud wrestling. And Henry from across the pond is here. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, of course, it's uh, Easter Sunday. What would you guys do for Easter, man? My well, wife, just, my wife made corned beef and cabbage for Easter. We had our traditional, uh, you know, ham and uh, sides, and you know, Kim did the uh, the thing. Just want to say real quick, a uh, shout out to Miss Gail up in heaven. Now she passed away, uh, not this past Friday, but the Friday before. That's Kim's, uh, my beautiful wife Kim's mother passed away, and want to want to mention her. Rest in peace. You know, she struggled with her health for a while, and uh, she's resting now. So. Uh, she will be missed, you know, Easter Sunday. She always said the prayer before we started eating, and uh, she she's not here, so sorely missed. So um, rest in peace, Miss Gail, and uh, we miss you. We love you. Yeah, here's to you, Gail. What other day would you chill? I will be coming in for the services. She obviously had a lot of friends. You guys are waiting a while uh to put it to rest so yeah that means you know, it's going to sure. be a big funeral um yeah, want to make sure everybody has a chance to to come in and uh mm -hmm. you know and then after that week we're gonna uh take a bereavement and then we're gonna be uh because kim's uh birthday is on the 19th so we're gonna be going the following weekend we're gonna go down to orleans and uh spend her uh her birthday down to orleans very cool be easy french quarter so in the french quarter yep. i'm gonna be down there at the end of the month are you really? Yeah, Monday through Wednesday, uh, like the last day of the month and the beginning of next month. Uh, there's a job. guy coming down. There's a guy coming down from Canada that we know. And oh, Canada! There. Yes, sir. He's oh, staying. He's actually staying in the French Quarter. Uh, we're really? not going to stay down there, but it's too expensive yeah. for us. But yeah, um, yeah, going to see them. The people want to know what's the axe you brought for tonight, man, for Easter. Well, I'm wearing my Jesus red and black. And with that being said, 
We're going with the freaking Gibson, man. Gibson this is Les a beautiful Paul. rig. This is the Gibson Studio. It's got the twin humbuggers. It's the Red Burst, man. It's uh, got a lot of flamage on there. It's, uh, you can't see my camera ain't worth a shit, but uh, it's a beautiful guitar. It's the only Gibson I have, and uh, it's really crisp. It's really loud, and it rocks. It's moved out. So uh, I've tracked with it a little bit the weekend. So that's what we're rocking, man, the Gibson Studio. Very cool, dude. Go. Very cool. That's cool. Yep. These guys are going off in the chat. My gosh. Ariel, let's see. Your face does does mix in well with the Roy Scheider from Jaws Spot. <laughs> Yes, yeah. yeah yeah my face works really well with roy scheider for some reason man really does uh let's see henry says glad to hear you joe i'm i'm doing good hope you're having a happy easter yes always having a happy easter um and yeah we've got a lot to talk about today including sports young lady football soccer whatever um but we do have some women's sports we're going to be talking about today too for sure so uh look Boss, man, come on. I can catch up with my brother on Easter, can't I? Yo, 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 no. yo, 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 Business will get out of control. It'll get out of control and we'll be lucky to live through it. Yeah, man. You know what's up with it. We got to yeah, talk about a few of them. We got to talk about the saber rattling that's going on all over the damn planet, you know. Um, warring with each Russia's, other for whatever freaking reason. Of course, reason. we got the Ukrainian conflict. We've always got headlines okay. on that. And here's some of them. We got uh, Russia is pre uh, preparing... Uh, 100,000 soldiers for a possible summer uh, offensive. Um, yeah. We've got, come on, sucker. Uh, Russia, Russia's mobile fire groups hint at deeper problem. Uh, I, uh, ISW. I wonder what ISW stands for. I don't know. I yeah. suck wiener. That's what it means. <laughs> I suck wiener. But you were talking about this. What's this one all about, Dan? Well, they're they're forming these fire groups uh, to combat the drone strikes that they're you know receiving from the Ukrainians. And where'd they get the idea from? The Ukrainians before have already set up their own fire teams to combat the drones that are the Russians are shooting in. So yeah, it's it's almost I mean it's fucking laughable, man. You have to I, I can't believe this thing is still going on. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hundred thousand troops more. I don't know where they're getting their people from, and they're putting together these fire groups. Uh, because uh, apparently Ukrainians hitting their infrastructure pretty good. So uh, they're going to set up and try to combat these drones. Drones are here to stay. And I guess that's the the way wars are going to be fought now. So, Yep. That's that's crazy, man. Let's see what else we got here. We got the missiles fired. Hey, quick, quick, I don't want to say this. To, uh, everybody in the chat, what do you think about the, the new setup here as far as the screen goes with the uh, the uh, atmosphere? Yeah, I want to be able uh, to play... I want to be able to play videos, and this is the screen I play videos on. And I did—I'm tired of flipping back and forth. So you guys, right. let us know what you think of the logos being here. Um, that the one top left is that big three is my brother. That's his logo, and you guys know mine. It's on every thumbnail I do. But uh, yeah, anytime you hear big three, you gotta go. <laughs> That's the big three, man. Um, Missiles lasers, fired at Kiev lasers, what I don't know. as Moscow threatens uh, terror reprisals against the wrong people. Uh, Dmitry Med Med Medvedev, blah, 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 uh, Medvedev. Who Ukraine could be behind the attack, says his country must kill everyone involved. Oh, my God. Wow. That's some, that's some serious rhetoric right there. Um, let me see what else we got. Yeah, speaking of that terror attack, four accused in the Russia uh, concert hall attacks appear in court, apparently badly beaten. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would imagine they're badly beaten. I'm surprised they're still alive. They all four uh, mysteriously hung themselves in jail, blah, blah, blah. Right. They all mysteriously Epstein themselves in jail. Um, 
Yeah. That whole thing to me is very strange. Uh, now, I suggested to somebody at work that uh, maybe because uh, public opinion is waning for Putin on this war front, mm -hmm. maybe he sets this thing up to, to whip up public opinion because he's saying that the Ukrainians are responsible for that. They put the gateway in so people could enter the country. He's determined that it was the Ukrainians that did that. So uh, I wouldn't put it past his ass to, to stage that. To whip up public opinion. That's well, just one a one art. We had several articles to cover about this last week, and we decided. Uh, I decided we weren't going to have a show last week because Miss Gale passed away. Appreciate um, that. Yeah. Yep, yep. And so, but some of those articles, which I don't have now, uh, I know one of them had video of this guy when Horrible. he was arrested. Yeah, one of them. I'm just saying, one of them had yep. video of the guy sitting there playing out saying we were paid to do this yep you know so um it's gonna be interesting when was to see the last time you saw isis get captured i mean these yeah. people blow themselves up mm -hmm. yeah they they usually don't be, they're not taken alive right these it's, people weren't masked they just walked mm -hmm. in there they looked very military to me the way they operated i don't yeah. know uh ariel says it looks good she likes it uh, she said sure. Russia's has a population of about 140 million. So that's where they're getting the people from since they don't want to rise up against the war. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we detailed at the beginning of it, a lot of military age men were bailing out of Russia at the beginning of it. So, yep. cause they didn't want to get conscripted. Um, yep. but anyway, moving on, uh, another, um, Thing that's going on a lot of sable rattling going on uh the u.n security council demands immediate gaza ceasefire after u.s abstains from the vote um that i thought was pretty interesting they didn't vote in it uh the United States valid. i mean that that speaks volumes yeah. mm -hmm. you know it does it does well it's an election year and yep. and, and and the president's got to play to his base right so uh Man, it doesn't matter you which know, side. You, side did, fucking just go with it, right? So yeah, I, I just him, keep supporting them. Yeah, right. Um, it's look. You know, I they don't still care have which, people. They still have people captured from that initial attack. Yeah, they do. Why is it, that, that's why. That's what that. people don't understand. They, they, they're, they're wanting their people back, and they won't give them back. And it's. I it's, mean, uh, come on. It's ridiculous. Look, it doesn't matter which side you're on on this thing. I, I pray that they just don't uh, escalate anything and, and they, and they come to terms and they just stop. I mean, I just want to see a stop to it. Um, we were going to dinner the other night, Dan, and there was a guy at the corner of Yuri. We're going to dinner last night at uh, Longhorn Steakhouse and at the corner of 70th and Yuri place where I had to hang a left on that side in yeah. the median and right at the intersection, there was a guy out there with a star David t-shirt on waving an Israeli flag. And I'm like, dude, I mean, I'm all for free speech and everything, but you look like a dumbass, you know? And I'd say the same thing about a guy waving a Palestinian flag in an intersection. <clears throat> well, yeah, like, that, I, it's, you know. it's your right to have that opinion. It's their mm -hmm. right to go out there and wave that flag. That's the beauty of our country. Mm -hmm. As long as he's not disturbing the peace and and he's not doing anything violent, he's no. he's he's giving his opinion, you mm -hmm. know. And we all yep. come from somewhere else, so he puts himself out on front street. I mean, he puts himself out there for attack. Yep. Anybody? Yeah, that he does. Drive that, by, that's what I'm concerned with. This guy's going to get beat up by somebody. That's what's going to happen. You know, what the, it's what a very divisive thing. If they, you I, don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. I don't true. know what saying is, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But, okay. I mean, it's just, man, enough already. We, that's something halfway around the world that has nothing to do with us. Um, what if it's a girl with huge boobs wearing a bikini doing it, Joe? Well, that's huge. a totally different thing. All right? Tracks of land. With huge tracks of land, Dude. we can deal with that, I mean, you know? I can't get these I mean, damn lasers to walk at all. <laughs> Does anybody have uh, Microsoft or are they using a Microsoft platform trying to figure out how to get these lasers to go and uh, just can't. And his, and his hands are continue to fucking fly fail. at the screen. Fail, fail, <laughs> fail. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Classic rando. No. <laughs>
I love it. Oh man. But uh, yeah, well, and by the way, what you were speaking of, the girl with huge tracks of land doing that would be a safety hazard. There would be car wrecks in that at that point. Okay. It's her right, dude. It's her I know right. It's her right to do it, okay. but come on. She wants oh, to advertise. Man. It's her right, dude. God bless her. <laughs> dude. Tracks of land. Tracks of land. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, what else have we got here? Uh Tim is here. He says life what? can be fine if we both uh oh man, no. I'm not reading the rest of that. He almost got me. He almost got me. But you know what you do get. Tim, because you know when you Tim show has up, his own video, people, man. People listen. There are some who call me Tim. Tim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Happy Easter, Tim. It's good to see you. All right. Back here in the States, it's all about Mr. Trump and his trials. Uh, in, uh, in a win for Trump, appeals court lowers his bond to $175 million in civil f- fraud case. Plus, we've got, uh, let's see. I wish they uh, would have lowered the bond that we had to pay. Shit. Right? Be nice. Kind of, yeah. I don't have that kind of juice, you know? You, you get the... Uh, you get the justice you can afford, bro. Exactly, um, bro. Donald, Donald Trump's a New York criminal hush money trial will start April 15th, judge says. And uh, let's see, J- uh, judge also issued a gag order barring Donald Trump from uh, commenting on witnesses and others in hush money case. That's yeah, that's that. the one about the, the porn star. No uh, way to gag York. that guy. No way. That right. Guy's it's, just blah, it's blah, 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 blah. Almost impossible, isn't it? Um, Trump's media company, however, this is going to piss a lot of people off. He's hitting, uh, he's getting all this money judgments against him. He's, uh, he's having a h- hard problem with the liquid capital, but Trump's media company valued at $8 billion in strong Wall Street, uh, Street debut. Uh, yeah. he, he took, uh, Truth Social Public, and wow, the dude all of a sudden shot up into the top 500 richest guys in, on, on the planet. I don't even know what that is. Truth Social? That yeah, I'm on it. it? I, I I got on it when he first released it. Uh, I get on all of them. I'm on Getter. I'm on Minds. I'm, I mean, I shotgun our show across, like, I want to say 15 to 20 motion, uh, social media sites. That's what's up, They're, man. Yeah, I, I, I put it everywhere. Um. And that's all I use these things for. About the only one I pay attention to a little bit is X, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, his haters can't stand the fact that he's worth billions of dollars now because he took that company public. Yeah. You know, oh my God. What's a good move financially, you know, because uh, look, he's in a financial bind, so why not? Right. So, yep. Yeah. He's got sneakers he's selling and a Bible he's selling. I mean, He's become yep. a uh, door door salesman, apparently. So, yeah, whatever, man. He, make your hey, money, dude, dude, the guy has always known how to make a buck. The art of the deal. He's always known it. But you know what? The, the sad thing about it is, guys, and we've said it a million times, and I, I even came up with a little visual for you. It's just sad that we can't get any younger folks to run for office because this is what we're stuck with again. It's it, we're stuck with it again. Yeah. Old guys, yes, we are going at it. I mean, old guys. Just remember, show. just remember, guys. I am not a Trump enthusiast. I am not Jeffrey from Geeks and Gamers. I am not all about Donald Trump. Uh, I'm a conservative leaning, so I'm going to go with the more conservative candidate myself. But right. um, God, I wish we'd get somebody else. You know, you guys know who I'm a fan of. It's that girl from Hawaii. I call her Wonder Woman all the time. I mean, she's been in the military, you know, she, her foreign policy is if you're a terrorist, we're going to use everything we've got to take you out. But if, if if, all this uh, regime change wars where we don't like the leader and we take them out and put somebody else in now, we're done doing that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm down with that. That I like that foreign policy. You know what I mean? So, but people had problems with her on the second amendment, which she has changed her mind about because she was actually confronted with a gun. 
and boy, it's amazing when people change uh, how that changes people's minds when it well it becomes real before. for you. If if things are not real in your life, you, you don't put a lot of credence on them. And then it right. until they become real that mm -hmm. you really take a look at it and say, Oh, yep. wait a minute, then maybe that's not right. Maybe I should right. change my stance on that. So right, exactly. Yeah, I'm with you. We we need some. And I, I just feel like there are some some voices out there that are not being heard because they're not part of the machine. So and that's it. Uh, we're not going to hear from them. If you want to see things change in elections, guys, we we have got to address money. Yep, Th that's what we've got to address. The way we do it, it we've yep. got to uh, we've got to change uh, the way the funding for uh, these. We got to level the playing field. Or we're yep. never going to hear those voices that Danny's speaking of, nope. because it's only going to be the guys with the money behind them that that gets anywhere. Yeah, I mean, when you look at these debates, they they put the people on the stage that meet certain markers of fundraising. That's how they do it. It's yeah, th there has to be a total overhaul of our uh, funding of all of this stuff. Okay, so the uh, the other big story this week, and man, it was such a tragedy. Uh, the search uh, uh, is still ongoing, but I, I think it's pretty much recovery now. Uh, this, this, this is a few days old right here. This headline, uh, six missing and presumed dead after Francis Scott key bridge collapse in Baltimore. Um, the cargo ship that, that hit it was being driven by, um, by the, uh, by the port uh, authority there, the port, uh, the port crew. And, um, yeah, the cargo ship. That yeah, and that's that's bridge. that's standard operating. Once they hit our ports, we have captains that take over these ships, and uh, right. that's amazing that only six people died. It mm -hmm. was quick acting by you know they they sent out the distress and the police stopped the traffic on either side. So I yeah, what they the did. What was going on with my camera? But uh, yeah, you know only You're six fine, people but... passing away, and those were workers there because they were actually doing work on the bridge, mm -hmm. and it sucks. But uh, it could have been a lot worse. Um, yes, actually. Now I gotta tell you, I I, I know an, I know a guy that uh, that works uh, with these ships. I can't tell you what what capacity he works in, but he watched the video, and uh, he he could tell just by what was what that ship was doing in the video. Um, he's pretty much convinced this was not a terrorist attack or no, anything like that. No, it wasn't. If they lost steerage. You could see that they lost power. He said the way you can really tell that they were fighting hard to move the direction of that ship is the smoke that was coming out of the back of that thing. Yep. They were driving the hell out of that sucker trying to get it to change direction, and they just couldn't. Once they got power um, up, you see that thing wet stack and just blowing smoke because they yep. were trying to change course, but... Those current currents in those those port cities are really strong and uh, mm -hmm. doomed. Yep, doomed. Yeah. So absolutely, and it's a shame. And I mean, man, as soon as it hit that thing, just went down. So. Yeah, you knew it was. Uh, yeah, that's that's all it takes for one of those supports because it, it's it's like an erector set, man. You take out one of the supports, and that's it. It's it's all coming down. It's a damn shame. Uh, the cargo ship that hit Baltimore Bridge was involved in. Uh, Antwerp collision in 2016. The dolly was reportedly uh, detained in Belgium after scraping side of of uh, quay and uh, significantly damaging part of the hull in good weather back in 2016. Um, right. That's that's not amazing to me. I mean, you know, these you know uh, accidents happen. You know, what are you yeah. going to do? Um, Joe, I need you to be in charge of the Defense Department. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to be in charge of the Defense Department. I, I can tell you this much. We wouldn't be scattered across the planet the way we are. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> What's amazing is uh, this, this bridge has been up for a very long time, and that's the first major accident going in. And that's a heavily used port. So, I mean, yeah, it's a shame for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, say a prayer for everybody involved and – you imagine being the guy that was piloting that thing and losing that power and hitting that? Oh thing? my God, man! That yeah, sucks. that guy that works for the for the uh, for the port that was driving that sucker. Oh my God! You know, um, the only th the only thing that uh, the source that I'm talking about, and he remains unnamed because I, I don't want to bring anybody's name up or anything like that. But he said the only thing that could have saved that parts is if it was being, yeah, parts unknown, um, is if it was being pulled by a tug. 
And if it was daylight, it would have been being pulled by a tug. Uh, so, you know, but uh, it was like one thirty in the morning when that happened. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Henry says he'd vote for me. So, yeah. Um, anyway. OK. He's obviously insane. So there you go. Yeah. Henry's. Well, he's British. So, you know, hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, OK, boys and girls, one more under the. Uh, the top of the heap and uh, it's a guy that passed away this week that uh, was actually one of the more central uh, sensible liberals I've ever seen uh, former U S Senator Joe Lieberman died this week at the age of 82. Now, if you don't know who this guy was, he was a prominent Senator for many, many years. Uh, he, uh, he was around for a long time in, in the Senate and uh, he was, Al Gore's running mate in 2000 when he went up against George Bush. He was he was the vice president on that ticket with Al Gore. Um, he, he, and he's one of the few senators that I would call a statesman. He didn't just stay here in the U.S. He went and saw what was going on around the world, too. Uh, so uh, let's remember Joe Lieberman this week. I mean, uh, he he was he was a servant of the country and. Uh, you know, I didn't agree with everything he had to say, but at least he, he, this guy didn't waver in his convictions at all. He didn't. You got to give him that. So, Joe Lieberman, which is dead. fine. That's good. But yeah. uh, we need to turn these guys over. He stayed in there too long. I mean, we got people in there just long in the tooth uh, mm -hmm. that don't waver in their convictions, and at the end of the day, that starts hurting our country. You know, so we need to get younger. You know, mm -hmm. we need to get more. You know, ideas other than the old shit that's. Look, our, our country's getting torn apart. We're fighting with within, and, and the people at the top, they're enjoying that because they get all the power. So as long as we keep fighting with each other. Yeah, no we need doubt. To be yeah. To unite this country again. That's what it's all about these days. That, that they're all about. And I was just thinking about this before we came on, Dan. This is, I'm going to start showing this almost every time I'm on YouTube. And you guys need to know this is where I stand on things. If you start talking about dividing, I ain't got nothing for you. I really don't. Okay. Uh, people can have different opinions on how we need to do things, but you know, I mean, this election that's coming up, I mean, you listen to both sides. They sound, make it sound like it's the apocalypse, man. They, 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 it's, we've got a president that's feeding the far left side of his party and not doing anything centrist. And then we've got, a guy on the other side that is completely all the way on the right side of the right wing. And, and there's nothing cent centrist about his message either. And, and, and those of us that are closer to the center are not being represented at all. It's ridiculous. Not at all. And, um, and, and we're the, we're the, I would say that the majority of the people that are close to the center are the ones that are paying the bill on, on a lot of this shit, you know? Yeah. Cause oh. we're the working class, you know? It's, yeah. uh, mm. Whoa. Nothing. Nothing. No, no, it just won't work, man. Hang hmm. on. Let's see, let's see if the boss can get it going. Hang on. Yo, 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 yo. Oh. No, he didn't get it going either. But he did bring on the jock strap. <gasps> Girls. That's what jock he did. Strap. Do. He brought on the jock strap. This guy right yeah. here's got skills. The placeholder <laughs> does not have skills. <laughs> it's time to talk about all oh, oh, the kind of millionaire. Saying, those ones that are trying to move and shake and, and make things happen on the gridiron and all that good stuff. Oh, I like that. Uh, Henry crazy. says, uh, Joe's atmosphere. It's true. At the end of the day, regardless of political beliefs, we're all human beings. That's right. And the mortal words of JFK, we all bring, breathe the same air. Damn it. I mean, come on, bro. What the hell? Um, okay. So in the jock strap this week, if I can get this damn in the jock strap, right? Here we go. In the jock strap, I have a pair of no, I'm just kidding. In the jock <laughs> We've got women's basketball out the gate here because uh Look. I've got I've got a guy sitting on the other side of me that's very interested in what's going on because this is gonna be an interesting matchup coming up. Women's March Madness 2024. What to expect in the Iowa LSU rematch? Um, when is this getting played, by the way, Daniel? I think tomorrow night, maybe. Is it? Uh, it's um, pretty soon. They get this was. Pretty... This is a rematch of the championship game last year. Of course, we all know that uh, 
Uh, who won? They had that? over 10 million viewers last year on that thing. So, we all know was, who the oh, winner wow. of that game was last year. Yeah, uh, the national champion. There, there it is. is. There it is right That's there. Oh, God, if I could have gone quicker, we could have seen That's it. That's what's it. up, man. It's got to be a proximity um, thing, dude. But what's, but what's interesting is uh, we saw one player for Iowa actually break the career points record this year and she's doing nothing but piling it up uh so it's gonna be that's gonna be a great game man because you know i was gonna want to rally around that chick you George, know what I'm you saying? see where this girl's shooting the basketball from yeah from like half court it's ridiculous man that kid that kid can hit it from anywhere that's why it's i don't want basketball anymore it's ridiculous yeah it, I mean, it, 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 they don't they don't chuck play. that up when it's I was not the game you and i grew up with is if you did chuck that up when i was i was playing organized basketball your ass would be you. at the end of the bench, never to see the floor again. <laughs> never. That's it, man. That's exactly what would happen. Different no game, doubt though. about it. No doubt. It's redonkulous. Redonkulous. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to be a great matchup. So uh, check that yeah, out. That's, Iowa that's and LSU. Go to the Final Four. So that's not even the title. That's, that's the Elite Eight. And uh, the winner of that one goes on to the Final Four. So it's, it's going to be a big game. Yep. There you go. Boo! She says boo. Ooh, yeah, I hear boo. you. Women's boo. basketball. Women's basketball. <laughs> Not the first subject I expected for the segment called the jockstrap. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're right, Henry. It's the oh, empty man. jockstrap edition. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But anyway, okay. So the next one we got, and this one, man, I really think. They're 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 having us watch flag football uh, during the Pro Bowl for a reason now. I think. Um, well, yeah, they outlawed another tackle. The NFL Ooh. owners approve ban on swivel hip drop tackle technique. Now, if you don't know what this is, what I thought when I first heard this, Dan, I'm like, well, they already got that rule in there. You can't body slam somebody. I thought it was like taking somebody over their hip and throwing them down on the ground. No. No. That's not what this is. This is a form tackle around the waist where you just let go of the way you basically take your feet off the ground and let your weight pull the guy down, which is a good way to tackle folks. But apparently because a tight end for the Ravens didn't get to play in the championship game. Now we got to change the way we tackle. Well, in essence, if somebody's out in front of you, you're going to have to let them go now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's I, I don't, I be like, oh well, fuck it. I can't. I can't do anything. Yeah. So, dude, if if I'm the coach of this team, I'm I'm like, just tackle the guy. We'll deal with the aftermath. We'll just deal with the him. aftermath. Yeah, just tackle him. Just I mean, tackle. that's that's ridiculous. They also changed. Now they went to the. Uh, I think it was the XFL that had the return, um, done up where um, what they do is both teams line up for the return around the twenty five to 30 yard line. Okay. And the kicker is on the opposite end of the field from these guys. And none of them are allowed to move until the ball gets uh, either hits the ground or talk or, or gets caught by the return man. That's the, if you move before that you're off sides and that's, what's going to be kick returns now. So, um, that one, I'm not, I'm not really, I really don't have an opinion on that one. They it's should just, just a have a kick him from the fifty, and there you go. Well, we'll be no. Here's returns. the thing: they want the they want the number of returns to go up. They're saying that if you don't get it inside the twenty, or the if you kick it out of the end zone, it's still a touchback, right? But if yep. you make it land inside the twenty, right, and they don't return it, then it's a penalty on the 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 home team, right? It's it's weird. You'd have to look at it. They want them returning the ball. They want to increase the returns, but they don't want the high speed collisions. Dan is what they're trying to avoid. Well, they don't That's want to tackle football. Okay, they don't I want understand what, dude. You've seen kickoff returns. You guys get lit up like it's nobody's business. It's the most dangerous play in sports. You know it is. No, it's not. What, we'll which, one you think? which one? Going across the middle at high speed. That's true. Whammo. That is true. That is running true. a sweep at high speed. Whammo. Yeah, that's quarterback. True. The tackle doesn't get his guy and he gets crushed from behind a guy, 300 pound lineman at high speed. Whammo. 
Yeah. That's fucking football, man. That's what I know. it is. I know, but you know, I, I no, they, no. they get they get more concussions on that one play than they do any other play in football. So I can understand why they're doing that. They're trying to uh, you know, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna outlaw boxing. But that 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 friggin' the, the hip drop tackle thing is just ridiculous, dude. I, I don't get that one at all. Um also this week, uh in Major League Baseball, um I tell you what would reduce your 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 concussions. Take the helmets off of them. Well, this rule actually comes from rugby. This is against the rules in rugby. Did you know Take that? Take the helmets off of them, and uh, you would see a lot less people getting concussed. Yeah, that's true. That'd be a lot less head hunting because they don't want to get head hunted, right? Yeah, do unto others my face as you is do. Too pretty, my face, my face. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, okay. Uh in Major League Baseball, the owners unanimously approved the sale of Baltimore Orioles to a group headed by David uh, Rubenstein. Um Rubenstein? Mr. Yep, Mr. Rubenstein. Approval of 75% of the owners is required and it was unanimous. So, apparently they like this guy. Um He's going to be the new owner of the or- Orioles with a uh God, he a looks group. like he's near death. Yeah, he's almost transparent. <laughs> Are you saying he needs to get to a tanning booth? Is that what it is? He looks like Steve Martin. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. He does. Um, also, this one uh, we wanted to talk about. Um, let's see. The circumstances don't add up. Former All Star AJ, uh, what's his name? Perizny? Uh, uh, skeptic about uh, showing uh, Tato's. Atani's uh, innocence in IEP. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's like four and a half million dollars that were were taken out of his account at like five hundred thousand dollar increments. I mean, anybody that's got a bank account is going to get those indications via your phone or somebody is going to say something. Hey, you got money disappearing out of your account. He's got accountants. I mean, he's got people. Yeah. Telling me he doesn't know he's losing five hundred dollars at five hundred thousand dollars a clip. That fucker is is he's he's gambling. He is. Yeah. It, well, it's either him or or his interpreter, right? He's using his interpreter as a pipeline. And look, he's like paper towel. He's been caught, so they're going to fire the interpreter. That shit will keep on happening. But you know, the major league needs to dig into that. They do need the to dig into that, like we were talking board. about, because tell them what you said pregame. They've got yeah. to look into this and find out who was doing it. They've got right. to because look, maybe the arguably the best baseball player in the game ever to play the game is not in the hall because of gambling, and that's Charlie Hustle. That's Pete Rose. Yeah, maybe Pete Rose is still the not in the freaking series, hall. But he's he got the hits, The guy played mm-hmm. balls out all the time, and he's yep. not in the hall, and that's just crazy to me. Yeah, it is crazy. It's absolutely nuts. Okay, the last one we've got is the Spring League started. The uh, the merger of the USFL and the XFL started this weekend. Uh, the UFL it uh, really. had its uh, starting weekend. and There were some highlights, and I don't really get into a lot of it, but uh, the, the champion of both teams last year played in the opening game, and yep. the champion of the USFL won. The Birmingham Stallions beat... The uh, Austin Renegades. Alabama, man. God dog it. What is it? Alabama. Alabama. Birmingham. Oh, yeah. Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it is Alabama. I, I, I didn't understand. Um, but, yeah, uh, they they won uh, against uh, the Bob Stoops led my team, the team I root for, the Austin uh, Renegades. Bob Stoops is the head coach. And, um Interesting note, though. Hang on a second. Where is my phone? I don't know the kid's name, but he plays for the Michigan Panthers. Uh, the Mich- Michigan Panthers freaking uh, kicker, that's what's pictured right here. You, you know how far this kick is, Daniel? He hit – I got a feeling he's going to get signed by an NFL team next year. He hit a 64-yard field goal to win the game against uh, the team they were playing. Look, these kickers nowadays, they can boom it. There's no doubt. I mean, just like any other athlete that's on basketball, they're all getting bigger, stronger, and faster every year. And, look, those records are going to fall. Mm-hmm. And we saw the longest field goal uh, in the first half, and then the kicker from the other team, he turned around and broke that, that record. So, 
I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not surprised. These guys can really boom it. They really can. Yeah. Yeah. They've got some talented guys at the kicker position, man. Some of those skilled position dudes. Well, I mean, one of the most popular guys in sports radio and actually he shows up at a lot of WWE events. He's, he dabbles in wrestling uh, here and there is that guy, Pat McAfee, dude. He's got a great friggin' podcast. If you don't, if you've never heard of it, Dan, and remember he, he was the punter for the Colts his entire career. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was very talented. That guy could boom the damn ball, dude. It was ridiculous. You can put it anywhere you wanted on the field, too. Um, no doubt. So, yeah. Uh, some of these uh, skilled position guys are really good. Uh, but we do have some uh, spring football. And, uh, yeah, it's it's looking pretty good. Are you going to watch that league? Yeah, I, I, watched, I watched the opening game this weekend. That's the only one I watched. But I tell you the team you got to watch out for, Daniel. They should have never moved the Rams out of St. Louis. Uh, let me see what team that is in St. Louis. Does man. New Orleans have a team? They had one in the XFL, but they didn't make the transition, bud. They didn't. They didn't make it. They had the. They had the New Orleans Breakers. The but, Breakers, uh, they, right? They, they were the yeah. Boston Breakers at one time, and then they went to the New Orleans Breakers. Okay, the team you need to keep your eye on, Dan. The the St. Louis Battlehawks, dude. They are getting thirty thousand people at these games. The they St. are Louis, rabid football fans in St. Louis, dude. St. Louis War Chickens. <laughs> They're Battle Hawks, I believe man. Is your name. It's kind of like the Battle Wings, right? The ones we had here in Bozier. You know what I'm saying? Okay, look, proximity. Right? Nothing. Yeah, I hear you. But, yeah, these guys, dude, you should say when, when, when you see they're going to be on TV, watch one of their games when they're playing at home, dude. That stadium is packed to see this football team. It was amazing. Chickens. Huh? The Battle Chickens. The Battle Chickens. The the St. Louis Battle Chickens. Definitely want to check them out. <laughs> no doubt. Um, <laughs> the Daniel, Battle Chickens. Crazy, <laughs> Classic Rando. That's my bro. The Classic Rando. That's him. Um, okay. Look, boss. Boss. You, you know... You don't have to do it to me. What channel is showing the uh, UFL Fox. games? Fox. Fox. Yeah. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo. He said it's flex oh, time. Oh, Luke. Man. He said it's flex Luke. time. Dude. He said it's time Luke's to cover dead. that pop culture stuff Luke, that we do. Luke losing the freaking hand again, bro. Oh, my God. Rocky, get your hands up, bro. I mean, come on, bro. Oh, Rocky Luke never does get in, bro. <laughs> Rocky Wait, uses... Rocky uses his head to block punches. That's Don't what's dive. fucked up about Rocky, man. Don't he uses dive. his head to block Don't punches. Dive. It's redonkulous. The golden diaper, right? Battle chickens. Ariel likes that name, battle dude. Chickens. The battle chickens. <laughs> they like the cock of the walk. That's it, man. <laughs> oh, man. That scream from Mark Hamill still causes my spine to shiver. Yeah, it does. Okay. So we got the opening... Uh, or excuse me, we got the weekend box office projections for this week. Let me make sure it's uh, up to date. Let me refresh the uh, screen. Yeah, it's up to date. Uh, It looks like Godzilla X Kong, the new empire is going to be the winner this weekend at 80,000 projected. We don't have everything from this weekend because it's Sunday, but that's, that's considering everything that's been made up to this point. Uh, Number two is uh, Ghostbusters frozen empire. Uh, number three is Dune Part Two. It's still in the double digits. Kung Fu Panda is still in the double digits. Uh, I guess a lot of parents are taking their kids to see that one. And then the horror movie Immaculate is a uh, serious drop off there, down to three million. So uh, that's what we got in the box office. Now, Daniel, you went and saw Godzilla X uh, Kong. It's not on my list. I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of these movies. Um, I, I'm more a Godzilla guy. You were always a Kong guy growing up. Did you remember... like the old uh, monster movies back in the day? Yeah. You, you like this one then? Because it is yeah. a classic monster movie. So so from what I hear, and you tell me if it's true, they dialed back the human story and put more of the Kaijus in it, right? Yes. You have a lot of battles between the Titans. Yeah. A lot of that. Yeah. You know, you've got the backstory, why they're there, blah, blah, blah. But you have a lot of Titans fighting. And, you know, from a theatrical standpoint, this is one of those movies that you you really like to go see in the theater. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it's sure. pretty good. And and Kong is well represented in this one. You know, he's yeah, he's 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 pretty badass, dude. Yeah. No doubt. Very cool. Well, that that's your guy. That's your guy. That's my dude. I know you. Got, I know you're worried about this one because they kind of punked him in the last one. So yeah, they you know. made him really soft. So yeah, but uh, so he so he makes a comeback in this one. I take it's no doubt. Very cool, man. Very cool. I'm no, glad it's you good movie. It. it is yeah. what it is. It's it's built correctly, and when you go see it, you're gonna see what it's built. It's it's a classic monster movie. Is what it is. Yep. Yeah. There it's you cool. go. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, we don't have too many stories in the flicks this week. Um, uh, I mean, we got Godzilla, but this one I thought was interesting. Scarlett Johansson in talks to lead new Jurassic World movie. Uh, the Oscar winner yeah. could follow in uh, fellow Marvel uh, star Chris Pratt's footsteps with a starring role in the new dinosaur adventure. Um, wow. Scarlett Johansson going to take Chris Pratt's place to lead a Jurassic Park movie? <laughs> I think they're they're trying to well I don't know what they're trying to do. It seems like that uh, that franchise is waning. Yeah. So I mean, you know, they're trying to get it's all about the story. I mean, if the story's mm -hmm. not good, it's just not going to stand up, you know. I haven't seen the last two, dude. I I watched yeah. the first one with with Chris Pratt, but I haven't seen the last two afterwards. You know, um when they had him training uh dinosaurs, I kind of checked out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's kind of that's kind of wholly unbelievable to me, really. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> They're I mean, trying to merge the MCU and the JWU. <laughs> yep. Well, let's see. Uh, BJ two is going to be amazing. I hope BJ two. I'm, I'm Beetlejuice. 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 Yes. Two. Yes. Now they they did drop the teaser for that. Um, I guess I could look it up and show it, but uh, you know, it, it, it's a teaser. Michael it's, Keaton, dude, that's all I'm gonna you say. You can't go wrong with Michael Keaton. You, can't go wrong. you know, yeah, I mean, we we look we look at a lot of these things and we think, uh, uh like Ghostbusters. It only made forty one million last weekend. Yeah, I did. You go see it? I wasn't yeah. interested in seeing it. All I saw was old guys. You know, it was a terrible. It was a terrible story, dude. Oh, Terrible you went story. and saw it? Paul Rudd in there, one of the best comics of the modern day. Yes. And he's barely, barely in the movie. Barely. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. That sucks. Barely man. in the that movie. That sucks. Well, let's see. Let's see. I wouldn't, uh, uh, let's see. Henry says, I wouldn't recommend uh, the last two, though I prefer Crichton's original novel over even the first film. Yeah, I, I hear that. I heard it's a great book. And I love the original movie, but. I heard somebody commentating the other day, you know, they always come out gangbusters with the first movie and the following sequels, you get diminishing returns, you know, and, and it, yeah. it seems to be true. And a lot of this stuff really does. You know what? And that's why I always hearken back to uh, the Godfather, yeah. the Batman trilogy, every mm -hmm. freaking movie could stand on its own. That Batman trilogy, I was amazed by how good that was. Uh, every, every one. You couldn't yeah. have that without the other one. So now a planned out trilogy is a little different, if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Godfather trilogy, it wasn't really planned out, but they they put the same. Uh, well, the third one, you know, uh, argue, they came arguably back the late. worst one, but it's still a good movie. Um, yeah, it's still a good movie. Great cast, you know. Yeah, uh, and the, I always think Andy Garcia. Whenever I see the, you know, the third one, yeah. that he really got brought to the forefront in that one the but, christian um, bill batman trilogy was amazing though yeah amazing. dude yeah, yeah you can really put good. that up against really the good. matrix and the lord of the rings it put that in the, in the argument for the best trilogy ever the star wars original trilogy that kind of thing yeah we we need we Magic. might need to do a show one of these days probably on the pop culture show about the best trilogy of all time and rank them you know what i mean but uh but i'm with you batman here here's the thing about the dark knight trilogy that's what i call it i know it's a batman nolan trilogy whatever you want to call it um it's the frank i really trilogy. think i take these superhero element out of it they're still great gangster movies dude they're, they're it's a great story I mean, it, it really yeah, is yeah it's awesome story yeah it's fantastic stuff um but anyway, we've got one more in the flicks tonight, and Ooh. that is that we had the passing of a Titan. This guy hasn't Titan. made a movie yeah. in a long time, but I got to tell you, when I heard this, when it hit hit me in my heart, uh, Lou, 
Louis Gossett Jr. passed yeah. away at the age of 87 this week. Officer, he won his Oscar for Officer and the Gentleman, but he was in so much more than that, guys. He really yeah. was. Uh, yeah. If you go look up his IMBD page, I can tell you off the top of my head, he is in a sci-fi movie that people still talk about today being one of the most underrated movies ever in Enemy yeah. Mine, where yeah. he they did a great makeup alien, job on yeah. him, and you can't even tell it's him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's him and Dennis Quaid. They're shipwrecked on a on a planet, and they have to uh, survive together. We all know what his planet. greatest role was to put him on the map. Though. Oh, we know what you say is going to put him on the map. That's uh, the sidekick the to the original Punisher, Dolph Lundgren, and the yeah. original Punisher, right? The original yeah. Punisher. But the ones, <laughs> the, one, the one that people always remember is uh, Officer and a Gentleman. Of course, yeah. you know, I love the way you said that guy's name. Mayo Mayo <laughs> he was great as the as the gunnery sergeant in that one and uh he was also fantastic in iron eagle which was yep. kind of a it, that movie was kind of you know wholly unbelievable but still it's a great movie i mean it garnered like a great movies, fan base man a lot of people yeah. dug that man because you know what back yeah. then when that iron eagle came out patriotism was on an all-time high man it really yeah, was. It was you know it reagan was. era boom do anything and so right. yeah Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. Uh, I, 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 gotta, I gotta tell you, man. Um, he hadn't made anything a long time and, uh, but Hey, he had a long life and he will be missed though. Cause man, uh, yeah, didn't he make he a few ironies? Yeah. He was in the first couple of them. I'll tell you something else. If you've never seen it, uh, I can't remember if he plays the president. Uh, he might, but, uh, he, the last thing I saw him in, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of these movies, Dan. They're called the Left Behind series. It was it was a series of books about. Uh, uh, it was supposed to be a modern day telling of revelations, like if it happened today. Yeah, wasn't and that it was one written by from, a, uh, a theologian and a, and a and a minister? And they're really good stories. But he was in the third chapter. I think he plays the president in it. Um, he was in the wasn't third the chapter. Wasn't the guy from well, one of these? Big time sitcoms was the lead actor in, in the first and second one. I yeah. can't remember what show it was, but uh, he's in all of them. Yeah. yeah. Kirk Cameron. There he does go. a lot of religious movies, dude. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, here's to Lou Gossett Jr. You will be missed, my friend. Did great stuff, and we will be watching you for years to come. I am out of coffee. Well, that's all right, because I think that's the last death we got to talk about this week. So that's the good news. Bad news is the boss is getting on my ass again, man. Yo, 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 yo. Oh. <laughs> it just keeps getting on my ass. Take it easy on me. It's time for earthquakes, boys and girls. Earthquakes. It's time for that stuff that shakes up things either globally or. I mean, honestly. Or nationally. Or I don't know who built these buildings, man, or that highway, but, I mean, come on. Where's the rebar? Where's the infrastructure, man? I mean, those things right. are just crumbling. Yeah, they are. Crazy. <laughs> and I don't know why she keeps trying to put that damn lipstick on. Yeah. Crazy. All right. So the first, first one we got to go with tonight, if I can get this to act right, it's acting up. Come on, man. Don't act up on me. Come on. It's locking up on me, Dan. Hang on a second. Okay, there we go. We're up there. First thing we got to talk about tonight is uh, Huge. Boeing CE. Track the land. Track the land on the advertisement. Gee whiz. No, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Boeing CEO De uh, Dave Cal uh, Calhoun to step down. Now, we know that uh, Boeing has had some very bad uh, accidents here lately. Some of them yeah, no doubt. aircraft. And didn't they have a CEO that died? Was supposed to be given a testimony or something in court, and got he died or was killed? I'm or? not sure if it's them. Uh, I, we did we did do a story. I don't know if it was Boeing though. I think it was one of the airlines. I think, I think it, it might have been, been one of the airlines. But anyway, moving but on. But anyway, yeah, Boeing hasn't been doing too well here recently, and he's he's stepping aside. Um, the move comes amid fallout from a uh, high profile safety failure on board an Alaskan airlines flight in January when a door plug blew out of a Boeing 737 max nine aircraft while the plane was, was in flight. So yeah, I guess he's biting the bullet for that one. Um, 
I'm telling you, if I keep getting these air, uh, airplane uh, stories, we may just start having to have a train, rented lips, planes, trains, and automobiles uh, version. You know what I mean? Let's see. Um, oh, Henry says he's moved. Uh, he's taken off. Got to head out. It's been fun. It's almost Henry, midnight. Henry, thanks here. for stopping All in, right. bro. Thanks a lot, bro. Appreciate you. Absolutely, man. Yep. Like and, and subscribe, uh, bitches. Bitches. You know what? Bitches. Ever since you did that, I've been saying that on every channel I go into. <laughs> I go I go like, share, and subscribe, but I say beaches. I beaches. spell out beaches. Yeah. Beaches. <laughs> he says, thank you, guys. See you. Hey, you take care of yourself, brother. Our take subscribers have a great sense of humor, so they're not going to get Yes, they do, them. man. Yes, they do. Okay, next up, we got the rapper Sean P. Diddy Combs. Homes Whoa. raided by Homeland Security. Whoa. Homeland Security. Security. Yes, apparently he's been sex trafficking, Dan. You pissed off the wrong dude, I'm telling you right now. Because I'd like to know who he pissed off. How are a lot of those people up there going to little islands and doing little weird things and blah, blah, blah. But uh, if you cross the wrong person, you get your shit busted in by Homeland Security. I'm telling you, man. He pissed somebody off. He pissed somebody yes, he off. Did. No doubt about it. Yes, uh, apparently, Cuba Gooding Jr. has as well. He's been added as a Whoopsie. defendant in this sexual assault and harassment uh, uh, suit against, against Diddy. Oh, my God. What the hell, man? Diddy, Diddy, what the Diddy, hell is going Diddy, on at Diddy, Diddy's Diddy. house, man? Boy, I tell you Sound what, like every extra. rapper in the world is chiming in on this, too. I, I could have, I had so many Diddy articles, it wasn't even funny. I I, I just said, look, I'm just going to put Diddy this Diddy's? Diddy Diddy's. <laughs> A few Diddy's about Diddy. I, I don't know, man. I don't know what's up with that. Even 50 Cent, the That's guy that just opened up. a bunch of freak shows, man. They all, look, he obviously upsets the wrong person. So, yeah, he's going to go down. Oh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. People are going to turn uh, on him. They're going to roll on him. And, yeah, he's, it's going to end badly for him. Yeah. Of course, he's he's going to – he's probably got enough money to, uh, you know, uh, mount a defense. But, yeah, man, when you got the Fed on your ass, oof. That's the one thing. All these things, none of these are federal trials that, that you notice none of them are federal trials that's up that uh, Trump is involved in. They're all at the state or civil level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, yep. you feel me? Yeah. It's not the Fed going after him. No, that, when you that, got Homeland Security busting in your shit, it. they've already put their ducks in a row before they even do anything. Right. Yeah. Just a matter okay. of course, a matter of yeah. You know. This did I who was it? Uh you know, I love Officer Tatum. I love him. Oh yeah. And you know who I'm talking about? And oh, that's yeah. the first thing he says. He said, Look, I'll tell you guys something about this before I show you this video. These guys just don't show up and do this. No. You know, like they were talking about they went in through the garage. He said they knew that garage was open. They knew who was there before they showed up. Oh, he yeah. said yes. the way this works. They know exactly who's in that house when they show yes. up. <laughs> they leave nothing to chance, dude. And no, they're not they going to act unless they've got good. And if they don't have good information, they're going to make it up. So you're going. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We got this one. U.S. disappointed and perplexed as Israel cancels delegation trip to Washington. They abstained from the vote about the Gaza Strip, and they're wondering why these people are, don't want to come visit them. Wow. Wow, man. Wow. That's just crazy. That is absolutely crazy right there. Um, RFK Jr. picks his running mate. What, uh, what to know about philanthropist Nicole Shannon? Now, Nicole Shannon is the girl that he's decided to be his running mate. Uh, for his bid, it's a third party bid for president. Um, I, if you guys have been living under a rock, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the famous anti vaxxer, is running third party, he's running independent for the presidency. Um, and this is the guy, uh, this is the girl that he's chosen to be his running mate. Oh, he didn't and, take care uh, of Rogers? Okay, cool. Yeah, right. Uh, th there was rumored, it was rumored Tulsi Gabbard, Aaron Rodgers. But this is the girl. She's a philanthropist, apparently. He said he liked her for her commitment to health and organic foods and deep inside knowledge 
of how technology, uh, technology industry uses artificial intelligence to manipulate the public and identify government abuses. He also wanted an athlete. He said, describing Shanahan uh, as an avid a surfer and softball player in her youth, he wanted, he said, uh, a gifted administrator and inquiring mind, someone open to changing her opinions, who is spiritual, uh, idealistic, and above all, someone with a deep love of the United States of America. So that's who he has decided is going to be his running mate. Um, so that, that I, I wanted to point that one out because I don't know that a lot of people understand that it's not just the two biggies that are running. So, um, RFK is uh, either one of them. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I put the name out there so you can vet it yourself, folks. Go look her up, right? And uh, see what you think of her. So, um, let's see. What do we got here? As a defendant, like uh, sporting Diddy uh, or against him? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. You're talking about Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, his name is mentioned in, in one of the uh, filings. Um, I, I, I'd have to look a little deeper and see if he's a defendant in it. I think that's what they were talking about. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think he's a defendant in that one. Somebody's yeah. brought charges of sexual harassment or whatever. He's right. a defendant in that thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one, dude, you want to talk about an earthquake? Here you go. We're going to see more of this coming up, I'm sure. Meet Atena. Spain's first AI model who is earning 10,000 euros a month. Atana, this is this, this model. Now, uh, you read this article and you find out that uh, she was created by a fashion, uh, a guy running a fashion uh, company, and he wasn't getting much action, so he created his own AI model. So for a his dude own created a female model who's yep. earning 10,000 Yep. Whatever European thing uh, a month. Okay. Yeah. It's the currency. Yeah. So he's an AI model. That. Sir? He's earning that money. Yes, he is. Of course he yeah. is. Yeah. It's his money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh -huh. Faux show. An AI model. Trying to put those models out of uh, those skinny girls out of work, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what With the deal skinny is. Skinny AI models. <laughs> there you go. With skinny AI models. What the hell? Oh, here's whatever, here's dude. here's a uh, blow for freedom right here. Julian Assange wins temporary reprieve in case against extradition to the U.S. Judges grant uh, WikiLeaks founder uh, permission to appeal against uh, removal from U.K., but only if U.S. does not provide suitable uh, assur assurances. Now, if, if you guys know, he used to run WikiLeaks and they uh, released a whole lot of stuff. Uh, oh, yeah in the day and uh i'm one of the guys that thinks you just leave this dude alone um it, he was doing what the press's job is and they haven't been doing for years and he was he was uh shining a light on some things you know what i'm saying uh that yeah. needed to be shined at the time um so yeah we're, we're in burst kind of stuff. yeah exactly right hello the, uh, you, you know that's yeah. why i took journalism in college that the, I'm, those guys were my heroes growing up man love them yep Let, let's see there you go joe make an anime vtuber girl and put it put it over yourself you'll get all the weebs yeah <laughs> i hear you <laughs> i hear you ariel give him huge tracks of land there ariel huge tracks of land Okay, well, uh, we've, we've got more good news this week in earthquakes. Uh, FTX founder Sam Bankman Friedman sentenced to 25 years on crypto fraud charges. All I can say is about time. This Ponzi scheme running son of a bitch went to jail, no, no doubt. And what I think's funny is Tom Brady used to be in his commercials, too. I was going to say, when's Tom going? <laughs> He had, he had a big hand in... in, in well, uh, yeah, he was the face in, of that crypto bullshit. Yeah, he was, man. But, uh, yeah, he got 25 years. So, good... Uh, good how many good years he those guys. Way to go. Huh? What'd you say? See how many years he actually serves. Yeah, we'll see. You know, I mean, I'm sure he's going to have good behavior. That dude. Oh, yeah, he'll Ooh. be out in five years. This was funny to me. I, I heard a radio guy talking about this... Uh, um, the day it happened, they had a huge fundraiser. Uh, protesters uh, 
uh, interrupt mm-hmm. Biden, Obama, and Clinton at a twenty million dollar New York fundraiser. Um, they said that they lined up cars and 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 dump trucks full of sand and shit. Basically, put a wall around this place because they were expecting this. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they had a bunch of protesters out there for this. Uh, oh, look who's front and center on the stage with all these fools. There's Colbert. Oh, you know it's so depressing because I saw him on. <coughs> I saw him on uh, Comedy Central when he used to. Um, yeah, he had a great show right after the Daily Show. Yeah, it was awesome. And then he goes on Nice, and you find out he's a straight up. Yeah, I was yeah. really. It's it's pretty bad by that, but hey, it is what it is. So yeah, what are you gonna do, man? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, let's see what else we got here. Millions of customers' data found on dark web and latest AT and T data. Look, AT and T is is now, having hell? leaks. Like every three years, they have a major leak, you know, but yeah. they, they go on to say it doesn't affect their operations. No, it don't affect them. It affects the people that they're like having their freaking personal information released out. You know, people are, are losing their privacy. at and is not affected by it. Oh, sorry. You know, this happened like three days ago. Uh, we're working on it. Rah, rah, rah. We're going to give you free software to improve firewalls and Bro, what's going on at AT and T, man? Yeah, that's a good question. It's absolutely a good question. And then finally, in earthquakes this week, we've got a good story about cops. I always love these. I always love these. Yeah, dude. Uh, police dog finds missing Florida toddler safe in the woods after following a scent from the blanket. That's awesome. How long was this? That's a great story. story yeah. How how long was that girl gone? We need for? we need more feel good stories. Yeah, we do. We need more feel good stories. Three year a three year old girl found by a canine. That that is fantastic, yep. man. How long was she he out there? Tracked her down, man. Here's That's the a dog. Lab. Yeah. That's What's definitely a retriever uh, class dog for sure. And they yeah. have great I mean, yeah, labs are are known for their their skills of you know, scent and whatever. All dogs are, but they're so intelligent. Those, uh, those retriever class dogs, man. And they found her. So that's, that's great. That's kick ass, man. The great that's story. Yeah. Kick ass. That's what, uh, uh, David's dad did, uh, when he yeah, was kind of first sheriff, he was a dog yep. handler. Yep. Yep. Well, that, that. That's a cool story to wrap that up with. Man. Yep. So, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Ariel says, uh, you know, AT&T is in on it. They get a bunch of money. Yeah, right. Sure they Probably do. sold it sure to somebody. Do. That's how it ended up there. Black Lab. I'm not kind of. Sh- I'm not quite sure what kind it of looks dog. Looks like it. I'm not sure. She says she has a basset herself. A basset, basset hound. There. Yeah. They're they're good. Danny's got a Frenchie. Woof. He, he's got an attitude full Frenchie. The dude. <laughs> the dude abides. <laughs> the dude. Abide. The dude does not abide. That dude right there. Mm. He makes his own rules. Good God. All right, boys and girls, it is time for one. It, it, you know, this is the war cry for this segment. Ah! <laughs> right here. Because it's Danny's favorite segment. He he invented this segment right here. And it's all about those guys that go, uh, uh, they, they're public servants. And they're there to speak for us. We're talking yeah. about America's best and brightest. The best and brightest, bro. I love that video, man. It's great. I know you do. I great. know you do. Well, we've got to start the segment with uh, a little bit of video here. I've got to prep it real quick. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Prep. What what I got to do to prep it is I've got to reboot. Nope. And then I've got to turn the sound on. Sound would be good. And video and, would be good. And and then in I got conjunction to, would be the best. The, okay, and and then I've got to uh, put the screen up. That would work too, right? Uh, you guys, let me know if you can hear it when, when I get it started. Today's yeah. show to talk about it. Yes, can hear it. I mean, this I- is the number one. So if you are the White House, this is number one. So she goes on MSNBC 
She knows this question is going to be the White House spokesperson. And listen to her. What I will say, our deepest, uh, obviously our deepest condolences uh, go out and our heartfelt condolences go out to the families uh, who lost uh, three, three brave, uh, three brave, uh, three brave, uh, three folks who are who are military folks, who are brave, who are always fighting, who are fighting on behalf and of uh, this administration, of the American people, obviously more so, more importantly. She doesn't know what she's saying. Three folks, three folks. It's disrespectful. The lack of preparation is disrespectful. She clearly doesn't understand the news that she's been appointed to speak about. She's the White House spokesperson, and she is not a bright person. Yeah, that's, uh, wow. Well, that's, the left has never been a big fan of the military, so I don't know that she doesn't know about the, you know, the story, but that's just the attitude. Yeah. The attitude. She know? doesn't know what to say. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. It's it's, it's it's not genuine, you know. No, it's, just, it's not. That's the, that's the problem I'm getting. It's it's her wording, whatever. It's just not genuine. It's it's not. So, well, you can tell wh- where her mindset is mm-hmm. by what she says. Yeah. When when she starts saying who they were fighting for, she didn't say the country first. She said fought for this administration. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm like, you can't say the fact that they're Marines. Yeah. They died in a drone attack. You can't. You can't that's, state that's, the facts. That's here. the mantra. She was stumbling over everything she said. That is, that is the mantra of the left. You know, defund the police, military, cut the military spending, and da da da. You know, that's the mantra. So Ariel says, I'm "Flip not us off. That might work. That will yeah. work. Yeah, pretty much. You get somebody. Okay, from the, the next far one right we got. Be- next one we got the the." Uh, Fire Department of New York firefighters forced to remove flag honoring 9-11 heroes after lefty poll questioned if it's a political symbol. Yeah, Not so you know, you. like, yeah. This is a story. You know how the, the police will have the uh, the American flag, black stripes with the one blue stripe, you know, commemorating a death of an officer, right. paying, you know honor to them and on and the firefighters have the same thing but they have a a red stripe and they've been flying this uh this flag on this particular uh fire engine since 9 11 commemorating the 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 firefighters that were lost 9 11 and and some council lady there one of her cronies uh made a stink about it and she ordered that that uh engine that unit to, to take that flag down and uh yeah, big uproar and really, you know, it's it's all about political wins. And then later on, when she catches wind that uh, people are up in arms, you know, they were cr- screaming it was the red stripe is fascist and rah, rah, rah. And that's not what it's about at all. I mean, talk to your constituents, the people that you're supposed to fucking represent. You'll find out that that's just red for the fire department, blue for the police department. So once they found out, you know, they're, they're allowed to put the flag back up. They're crawfishing now, right? The crawfishing now, just it, just dumb. That's best and brightest making decisions. That's sitting up on high, not giving a shit about what's going on below you. That's what yep. that is. Yep, that's yep. exactly what that is. Uh, okay, uh, what else we got? We got. She's a paid more. up socialist, by the way, in uh, that region. Oh. Wow. Uh, the last one we got abbreviated pundit ra- roundup. Half of congressional senior staffers are ready to quit. Yeah, you know, the senior, the staffers are the ones that carry the mail. The staffers are the ones that carry the mail. They try to make deals across the aisle and to try to make get things done. But because right. of the, the just the, the poisonous shit that both sides' leadership are spewing in the public, in the public realm, um, they can't get anything done. Because... Oh, you froze so, up there for a second. Me in the middle, you're, you're betraying your party, so... Yeah. yeah, a lot of these, uh, and if you read the article, a lot of staffers are considered, and these staffers, keep in mind, Joe John, these are these are educated people. They have law degrees. Yeah. They, a lot of them have law degrees. So they, they go up there to try to make a difference, and right. they're fed up with it. So we're going to lose a lot of the, the, the on-the-ground leadership that get things done for our country. They're considered leaving because they're so bad gridlock, they can't get anything done. 
Yeah, that's it's, sad. That's, that hurts us. It is sad. As a citizen, that, that's that super hurts. sad. And and like I told you, we've been we've been binging the West Wing. Uh, Look, I got a thumbs up. How did that happen? I don't even know. You got Some a thumbs up. With a thumb. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh man. Amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, we've been watching the West Wing uh, all weekend, and it's uh, it's my favorite drama I've ever watched on television. It's it's the way. Washington's supposed to work, you know, of course it's fiction, you know, but they do a lot of research on it. Matter of fact, they had one episode, Dan, if you've never watched this, they had actually uh, counterparts of the people that are portrayed in the show from different administrations on one episode talking about what it was like to work in the white house, you know, and stuff like that. You know, they had yeah. the press secretary for, for, I think Bush in there and uh, somebody that worked for Clinton was in there. They actually had Clinton on there. He was talking about, you know, uh, I think what he said about it was, he said, you'll, you'll find this and everybody that's ever worked here. He said, they'll, they'll say they're having a lot more uh, free time to themselves. They're, they're spending a lot more time with their family and they didn't get to see him very much when they worked there. But everybody to, uh, to a man or a woman would tell him, they miss the work because mm -hmm. it's, you know, you, I mean, you're making decisions that are going to change people's lives, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of people to do that and weigh the public opinion and try yeah. to make the best decision for the people. That's it. The people. That's, mm -hmm. that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Acts, uh, that, that is what's supposed to happen. Um, so that's it for uh, the best and the brightest boys and girls. That's it for them this time. Yeah. To answer oh, man, this question, so good, Ariel, dude. what would happen is they would they they'd actually be able to fund certain parts of the government, like. I don't think our military misses a paycheck. Uh, the postal service doesn't either basic necessities of the government, but the rest of them got to go home. I'll tell you what doesn't happen when the government shuts down. They don't stop taking our tax money. No, they don't. They don't stop They're taking still money. coming in. No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the government doesn't generate its own fucking and it's, money. It and it's happened. Us. It's happened a few times. It, it They've, they've let the government shut down before they have. It, it's happened a few times. But it doesn't ever happen for long. Um, one of the first things gets shut down is nas national parks uh, and things like that, you know. So, excuse me. Okay, boys and girls. From from uh, my man, our new boss. Yo, 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 yo. He said yo, yo, it's yo, yo, time yo, yo. To, to strap on the jock strap. Get that cup in there. Get your chin strap on, get that helmet on, pad up, because it's time to turn out the lights. I have the utmost respect for Kurt Warner for going in there. I have the utmost respect for Kurt Warner for going in there. <laughs> Ooh, <Kurt> levitation. <laughs> From dude. here to here in a flash, dude. <laughs> Arrow says it's time Just... to strap on the jock strap and feel the G's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geez. Kurt Warner felt a few G's when he came to a complete stop and exactly. headed 180 degrees in the other direction, that's for sure. <laughs> All his atoms got rearranged. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> he got turned into a gel. What the fuck? <laughs> on the inside, anyway. <laughs> Every one of those hits are wicked, though. Every one of them. But you know what? There's only one that got the trifecta. And that's my boy, that's right. He got the He got the fumble. He got the recovery. That's right. He got the try. He got the revenge, he got dude. 
He got to lead revenge. him up earlier in the season. He if you revenge. guys only knew the story behind that hit right there, uh, it was a long time coming for that guy. He right says there. that's the highlight of his career. Yeah, yeah. That was Largen said he several times that. that that is his favorite play. A yeah. tackle, not a catch. Yeah, and he was a wide receiver his whole life. He smashed that dude. <laughs> yeah, he did. All right, well, you know, when a guy knocks out a couple of your teeth, you tend to take that personally. Get you know? back coming. <laughs> Got a little get back coming. All right, this story, I st- uh, my stories are from right here in uh, Shreveport, a little hometown news for you. Uh, Henry Whitehorn, you, you guys might have heard me uh, talking about this over the last few weeks. Uh, him and a guy named Nicholson were uh, in a very close race that was decided by one vote uh, during the uh, November elections. One and they vote. decided, yeah, one vote. <clears throat> and, and and this guy won it by one vote. And they, 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 you know, the lawyers got involved, as they always do in these close votes. And the judge sure. finally said, when it was all said and done, hey, we're going to have another election. And, uh, when it was just them going against each other, um, yeah, I, I knew this was coming. Henry Whitehorn won, uh, by landslide. And, uh, uh, I, I think he, he won by my gosh, I believe Two it was votes. 10%. <laughs> no, it was 10% of the vote this time. Um, I think he got, uh, 60, I think it was like, uh, how does it swing so much on the, on the second vote? How, how does it yeah. swing? so Well, much? because That's you crazy. don't have the field diluting it. <laughs> Okay. It's mono and mono this time, right. and and yeah, it's going to be different. Did they say uh, what the but anyway, was He is day? now he has been elected. He is the first African American to be elected Cattle Parish Sheriff. Uh, so, did they say what the voter right turnout home. was for that? Um, let's take a look and see. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, it, it's it's right here. Um, looks like it was a total of about twenty five thousand, bro. Which is about ten percent of the population here, with forty-two percent um, of cattle registered voters turning out. Mm-hmm. There was a difference of forty-two hundred sixty-five votes between the two. Yep. So forty-two percent of cattle parish registered voters turned out. Wow, that's forty-two percent. Hmm. Well, forty-two percent. I know we got almost voters, a quarter million people. So uh, yeah, there, there must be a lot of young people. Of the registered voters, make the determination. Yep, that's it. There you go. Uh, but he's he is now the uh, and of course they're saying fraud and all this other stuff. I'm like, guys, come on! If you know the demographics of this town, uh, why are you shocked? You know, right? I mean, Cattle um, Parish that's predominantly yeah. an African American right. black community. Yes, it, it just is. is. You know, it is. And now Steve Prater, the outgoing uh, retiring uh, Cattle Parish uh, sheriff, has been the sheriff. He was going to be the sheriff as long as he wanted to be. He was a great law enforcement guy. Uh, yeah, well. And I hope this guy fills the shoes, man. I really do. Um, I think he did. No, I, I hope he does well. I really do. Yeah, um, yeah. And then the other story I have for us from my hometown tonight is it's been rumored that it was coming and, you know, maybe it wasn't coming, but they've started to fill positions. Shreveport's Amazon facility opening on track and now hiring. So it uh, looks like we're, it's not manufacturing. This is a, uh, what do they call it? Fulfillment center that Amazon it's a, uses? Yeah, it's the distribution center is what it yep. is. So, I mean, it's still yeah. going to bring jobs into the community. Yes, so that's good. Absolutely. You know? I could probably go to work over here because uh, I, I would imagine a lot of this is automated and that's my wheelhouse with the degree I've got. I've got a degree in uh, applied sciences industrial instrumentation. So mm-hmm. I'm sure I could do that, but, uh, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm, I, I like what I'm doing now. So <laughs> well, yeah, if you didn't have to go back in manufacturing or warehouse or whatever, I, I wouldn't yeah. do it. So no, heck no, yeah. but that's, that's good news for the economy of Shreveport. No doubt sure about is. it. We're going to have sure. some new jobs here in town. So Shreveport that's and probably- Bozier, cause people from Bozier can get jobs over there. It's good oh, yeah, for, the for sure. We're, we're, it's, it's like twin cities. You know, mm-hmm. uh, they're, they're right on the banks of the Red River across from each other. Yep. Uh, main reason why Bozier's here is because of the Air Force Base. Uh, yep. That's, uh, But it's been, look, Dan, you've been back to town. Bozier is expanding south and north. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People are moving across the river over here. Because, mm-hmm. um, well, we know the jobs leaving have, have kind of turned. It's looking like Detroit. Louisiana over there, you know, sometimes it's, it's, yeah, that's a whole thing that I could get into that, uh, 
Mm -hmm. It's it's anyway. uh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. What we were talking pregame, right? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah I got you. Okay, boys and girls, it is time for that award that my brother likes to give out every week. Yes, it's what we call the Simple Jack Award. <laughs> it's that uh, it's that award we give out for those folks that are trying to do the right thing. They're trying to do it, but <clears throat> for some reason they just they just can't quite get it done, and uh, because they're trying to be good citizens and get it done. We give them the simple Jack award. And this week, uh, what did you call it, Dan? What, the hypocritic oath edition. The, the hypocritic oath, not Hippocratic. No, the hypocritic the oath edition. Uh, I'm going to read this headline. I'm going to let him explain it. Doctors told woman cancer assist was pregnancy. What the hell, man? Okay, so she, uh, a young person, I think she's like 22, 23 years old. This is over in the UK, and she's uh, suffering from you know, she's bloated or she's, she's out to here in her stomach. Uh, she's having a hard time breathing using the restroom. So she goes to the doctor and before she goes, she takes a pregnancy, pregnancy test, comes back negative. So she goes to the doctor for help because this is getting bigger and she's having a hard time. And uh, yeah, you're pregnant. You're pregnant. So, you know, no big deal. You're pregnant. So and by and by, they start doing ultrasounds and blah, 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 and find out she's got a huge, cancerous cyst on her ovaries and a couple of operations later like nine ten hour operations and then chemotherapy she's in remission but they told her and then these people are these people have degrees you know these are doctors phds oh you're pregnant yeah well yeah you're gonna have a baby no no you got cancer sorry about that misdiagnosed that on a freaking medical and hypocritic oath level, it went full retard. And that's all I have to say about that. Never go full retard. Never go full retard. Never go full retard. Full retard. Full retard. You're pregnant. Good Lord, man. How it's do you misdiagnose trust, that? Right? Don't you have to do a sonogram? I mean. You're pregnant. Wow, dude. You're pregnant. Oh, wow. sorry. Oh, yeah. You got cancer. My, my bad. It's not a baby. Yeah, it's cancer. Okay, boys and girls, Whoopsie. get into that and find out which hospital that is over there in UK. Henry, if you're still, <laughs> if you watch the rest of this on the replay, Henry, don't go to the hospital this chick went to. <laughs> right? Gee whiz. <laughs> Good Lord. Got to watch out for my friends. Okay, boys and girls, that's it for this week. Uh, you want to try and give the rock and roll symbol one more time? Wait, uh, can we get it? No. It's, Tells you no, but you got it a couple sucks, of bro. thumbs up, dude. You got a couple of thumbs up. That was pretty cool. That was cool. But uh, yeah, okay. Well, that's yeah. it for today's show. It's the Easter edition of the Brothers Act the Matrix. You can tune in for this every Friday. Happy Watch Easter, all, everybody, by the way. Listen God to me, Friday, all. Sunday, every Sunday, you can tune in for this. And uh, we go through the clown show that is 2024 in this week's headlines. Come check it out every Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time. And uh, starting soon, don't know when it is. It's been he it, he's working on it though. The MFR Roadhouse is going to be coming your way late night on Sunday. So watch Jed Revenwolf's channel for that. Monday morning, tomorrow morning, we will be doing a a uh, tribute to the late, great Lewis Gossett Jr. When uh, Gary and I get together with his lady, Anima, and Martin Acosta and talk about An Officer and a Gentleman, the uh, movie that got Lewis Gossett Jr. his Academy Award. Uh, looking forward to this one. I haven't watched it in a long time, but God, I remember every second of this movie. Um, man, who was the actor that played his buddy? that ended up uh, self-deleting himself in that movie. He was great, too. It was really good. Yeah, he's in a lot of stuff, too. Redheaded guy. I can't remember his name, but he's good. He plays Drew Barrymore's uh, father in Firestarter, and I'll never forget that shit. When he's laying on the bale of hay, you know, and they've shot him, and he looks at her and goes, burn it all down, baby, so they can't do it to anybody else, you know? That, that, I mean, he was he was a good actor. I loved it. But anyway, we're going to talk some Lewis Gossett Jr., Officer and Gentleman, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central Time on Pop Culture Mindfields channel. And then uh, 
It's Only Talk and Roll comes your way at 4 p.m. Central Time. Tomorrow afternoon, uh, they're going to be uh, doing Dance with the Devil, Cozy Powell tribute. Uh, Cozy Powell played drums for several bands. Uh, I can't remember the whole list right now off the top of my head, but you can find out all about it tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central Time on It's Only Talk and Roll. Uh, I, if I show up on the show, it's going to be late because I'm actually at 3 p.m. tomorrow. I don't have a thumbnail for it, but I will be on Ryan Roger Athey's channel. He's doing his first wrestling show uh, tomorrow at 3 o'clock. This is a British guy I know that uh, did a review on my channel once, and he ended up doing a wrestling show with me when I was doing it with Danny, if you remember, uh, the, the guy from uh, Las Vegas. Anyway, he's doing his first wrestling show the week before WrestleMania, which is next weekend. And uh, I'm going to be on there with him from 3 p uh, uh, at 3 p.m. tomorrow. So check that out on Ryan Roger Athey's channel, okay? And then I start my streaming week on my channel on Tuesday at 10 p.m. Central Time with the first of a couple of video game shows a week. Uh, Papa Joe Gamer After Dark Video Games Cocktails and Fails Going to play a little Stuntman Ignition uh, I'm going to do that Tuesday at 10pm And then uh, Wednesday We start with uh, State of the Atmosphere The Pop Culture Show Where we get into the box office stuff We do uh, nothing but pop culture on that one though We talk movies The conversation always goes to Star Wars at some point Because everybody on that channel uh, my panel on that channel loves them some star wars so love if, you star like, wars. if you like movies and comic books and stuff like that come come yak with us at 5 30 p.m uh, central time on wednesday on state of the atmosphere and then shortly after that at 8 p.m i'm back over on pop culture minefields channel with uh john das wolfen and his show game night he's playing uncharted uh lost legacy right now so come check that out at 8 p.m central time on pop culture minefields channel on wednesday and then wednesday night late at 11 p.m uh just before i go back to work i always like to do a video game show and i'm doing a walkthrough of mass effect i started it last week i'm enjoying it, it everybody's told me uh that it's like a uh, Star Wars version of Fable and uh, it's a role playing game and I'm enjoying it so far so come check that out 11pm Central Time on uh, Papa Joe Gamer After Dark and then Friday John is going to be back on Pop Culture Minefield with Knock doing a new game uh, if you go check out Das Wolfen on X he's got the poll up I think one of them is a uh, uh, Walking Dead game and some other things. It's about four games listed there. You guys go vote, and he's going to start playing a new game because he just finished Detroit Become Human this Friday. So definitely come check that out Friday at 8 p.m. Central Time on Pop Culture Minefields channel. And then uh, Friday uh, morning, you can see me at – or I say morning – Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. Central Time, sketching the privateer, the story of America's pirate patriot. I'm working on a family portrait right now that's looking really cool. You guys tune in for that. You can watch me draw it live. It's a lot of fun. And then uh, we're right back around to Sunday and the Brothers Hack the Matrix. So for myself and the Highlander, there can be only one. We want to wish you a happy Easter and say to you thank you there it is there it is the rock and roll <laughs> all the way and we want to thank you guys <laughs> and until we see you again i want you guys to keep on keeping on god bless